Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for waiting. Sorry that I, I was uh, having trouble with Zoom. Okay, all right, very good. It's good to see you. I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, tell me, what did you do in the weekend, Miguel? Mostly reading. And I practiced a little bit. It was mostly reading stuff. Okay, nice. Okay, what about you, Wilfredo? What did you do on the weekend? Hey, microphone, microphone. Yeah, right. I, I just forgot to turn it on. Uh, well, I was uh, listening to some uh, uh, conversations in the uh, uh, the guy you sent us, mm -hmm. and I practice on listening lessons. Okay. Did you practice on the application or on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, the application YouTube. Okay. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. Hello, uh, Melody. How are you today? So far, very good. What did you do for your weekend? I went shopping my my stuff for living. Uh -huh, nice. Nice, very good. Hello, Veronica. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, thanks. How was your weekend? It was very well. I was practicing listening and also reading. Okay, perfect. All right, very good, guys. So the rest of you, welcome. I hope you had a great weekend. Let's go ahead and get started. So this week, we're going to start with uh, listening, okay? So uh, the listening section is gonna be, it's, it's actually shorter than the reading section. Uh, so I want to show you a presentation that I have about um, the different aspects uh, of the listening, like an introduction, okay? So let me share with you. Okay, very good. It's, let me try to make it bigger. Nice. Okay, very good. So I, we want to uh, focus on the TOEFL. Uh, we're doing the IVT ver version of the test, right? So we're doing the, the internet-based testing version. And uh, we're gonna focus on the listening section today. So I have some introduction, some information that I that I want to that I want to view, and then hopefully we have time to do to see a, a practice test on YouTube. Okay, uh, the listening sections, right, is focused to ba basically measure your ability to understand conversations in English and lectures in English. Okay, and there are two types of uh, two types of uh, in this section, you will basically have two type of questions or, or languages. Um, so let's go ahead, oh, let's go now to the different type of questions that we're going to see. Uh, number one, we have informative uh, type of questions in this forum of typical, uh, th this is for example, conversations that you will see between two people and the, they're informative, they're academic, and they're conversation. Okay. So you're going to have, for example, a student and a professor talking, or maybe two students in the same class speaking. Uh, so that's going to be the, the type of conversations that you're going to see. You're also going to see formal and academic type of conversations. Uh, the lectures. The lectures is like a professor speaking and they're having a discussion on the subject. Uh, the subject is gonna be something like social science, natural sciences, art, business, et cetera. You don't have to have knowledge of, of that specific type of, uh, of subject. You don't have to have knowledge about that to answer the questions. Okay, so again, it says you don't need special knowledge. 
Um, another type of, uh, another. let's go now to the type of questions. Uh, you have basic comprehension questions. This is very easy, like WH questions, right? What, when, where, how, very basic questions. You also have sometimes uh, true or false questions you can have. Uh, these are basic comprehension questions, okay? Uh, the other type of question that you have are pragmatic understanding questions. What are these? These questions, basically, uh, what they're gonna do is measure the attitude of the person, all right? For example, uh, is the person upset? Is the person um, energized? Is the person happy? Is the person sad? So that's gonna be pragmatic understanding questions. They test understanding of certain features of spoken English that go beyond basic comprehension. So this is a little more, more detailed. Generally speaking, these type of questions test how well you understand the function of an utterance or the stance or the attitude that the person is expressing, okay? Uh, Right. Very good. So the next type of uh, the next type of ah, remember this, the speaker's attitude. That's going to be important because sometimes you have to they're going to ask you a question. Uh, what is the speaker's attitude towards this point? Ah, The speaker disagrees strongly or the, the speaker is 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 happy about it, you know, so focus on the attitude of the person. A, the next question, number three here, is connecting information questions. These questions, what they do is they connect ideas. So for example, I have one idea here and I have one idea here, right? Something connects that. What connects that idea, okay? Connecting questions, measure your understanding of the relationship among ideas. These relationships may be explicitly stated or you may have to infer them. Uh, remember this word from the reading section, infer? That means uh, tu lógica, que es lo que tu piensas, okay? Uh, según lo que escuchaste, right? Uh, so basically connecting ideas. There's gonna be some questions that are gonna connect ideas, right? So I have an idea here and I have an idea here. Something connects it. And that's what I have to find out. All right, uh, so some of these questions, van a, van a ver esa palabra infer. So that means, remember, is your guess, right? No es algo que lo dijeron específicamente en la conversación, pero es algo que ustedes van a, eh, usando lógica, encontrar. All right, the next type of question is main ideas questions. Remember when we did skimming and scanning? Remember? So remember that we did skimming to find the main idea, right? We did skimming. And when we're doing skimming, it's to find the main idea. Remember that is sometimes at the beginning. Usually, it's, the, it's gonna be the first thing first thing that you listen to, right? Es lo primero que dicen. That's the main idea, okay? Usually, in, in, as soon as the person starts speaking, ahí está la introducción. It's gonna be in the introduction, okay? All right. Another type of question that you're going to look at y ya vamos a ver ejemplos de cada una, es uh, purpose questions, all right? Purpose questions usually come in the form of mainly serves to. They ask you for the purpose behind a particular portion of the passage. En, otro, en otra palabra, ¿cuál es el punto? What's the point of it? Why is it there? Okay, what is the purpose? Okay, sometimes it's going to answer the question, why? If you see the question why, be careful because that's a purpose question. Okay. Estamos hablando de preguntas de listening, right? That you're going to see. 
Um, another one is implication questions. Implication questions is causa y efecto, okay? Cause and effect, all right? So for example, they're explaining this, right? Y pasaron dos minutos hablando tratando de hacer este punto. So, ¿cuál sería el efecto? What's going to happen? Okay. That's an implication question. For example, what will be the result of something based on the passage? What will be the problem or the result? Right? What will be the positive result? Puede ser negativo o positivo, it doesn't matter, right? What is the, the, the result? Okay. So this is an implication question. All right, another type of question is inference questions, right? Esta ya la vimos eh, en la parte de reading, vimos bastante de estas. Uh, basically, what you're doing is using logic to uh, make a guess, uh, make a guess about what's going to happen, what's the conclusion, what's the result, okay? All right. So I want to read the directions that appear in the test, okay? Estas son las, eh, las instrucciones, all right, that appear in the test. All right, the TOEFL listening section directions. This section measures your ability to understand conversations and lectures in an academic setting in English, okay? So academic setting quiere decir una universidad o un colegio. You will first listen to a passage and then answer questions about it. You may listen to each passage only once. You are allowed to take notes while you listen. Okay? So, ¿cuántas veces lo van a escuchar? <laughs> only one time. One. Yeah. Only one time. Okay? Usually, it's between two to five minutes. Okay? Cada cada conversation or um, section is going to be between two or five minutes, okay, more or less. So be careful uh, with that. Now, there are some questions. Ya van a ver que hay unas preguntas donde sí puedes repetir, pero solo, solo te dan una porción del, del, del pasaje, ¿verdad? Para tú analizar. No te dan toda la conversación. All right. So ya vamos a ver eso. Um, you will be asked, uh oh, this is important, right? Take notes, take notes, okay? So you have time. Eh, ya vamos a ver diferentes estrategias, different things that we can use to take notes, okay? Eh, si ustedes ya aprendieron algunas de, 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 de sus estudios eh, en la universidad, en el colegio, les enseñaron, pues úsenlas acá, usen ese dif diferente tipo de estrategia. So we want to take notes, right? You will be asked about the main idea and supporting details. What is the difference there? Main idea and supporting details. What is the difference? What is ma main idea? Ya sabemos, right? what is the topic about, right? Usually when we do skimming or when we listen, right? At the beginning, but what is supporting details? Okay, let me give you an example, okay? Uh, let's say, America was, uh, was, Declare its independence from England in 1776. Okay. Very good. America declared its independence from England in 1776. Esa es una oración, right? So, what's the main idea? Independence, right? That's the main idea. What is the supporting detail? Aquí hay un detalle in this sentence. What, what can be a, a, a detail? The date. The date, correct. The year, right? Yes, correct. So this is a supporting detail. So you have a main idea and a supporting detail. Well, the same thing for the passage. You're going to have a main idea and the supporting details. 
Supporting details um, are usually things like what? Dates, facts, um, numbers, names. Que mas? What can be supporting details? Um, uh, uh, let's say maybe uh, data when you have numbers, you know, anything like that. Okay. So those are supporting details. All right. Uh, sometimes you will be asked to infer the meaning, right? So some questions you're going to have to use logic yourself. Inferred, right? Get us it. Infer, basically make a guess, an educated guess, okay, about about the the question. Uh, these answers are usually not explicitly stated in the passage, right? But must be answered based on your own ideas in regards to the speaker's attitude. Okay, so that's important. The tone and the context. All right, very good. Uh, when you see the audio icon, it means that there is an audio passage you must listen to, right? Please click on the icon. So cuando vean eso, listen always, right? Puede estar al inicio para escuchar todo el pasaje o puede estar dentro de algunas preguntas, ya vamos a ver. Most questions are worth one point each. If a question is worth more than one point, it will be indicated in the directions. Answer each question in sequential order. You will not be allowed to skip or go back to questions during the actual test. All right? So no pueden brincar, no pueden retroceder. You have to go in order. All right, questions? Questions? All right. Questions? Okay. Very good. So this is an example of a question, right? Uh, what is the professor's main, main, uh, mainly discussing? Okay, so what is this main idea question? Okay, main idea question. Uh, how is the lecture organized? Okay, this can be a supporting detail question. Okay, so this is an example of some, some of the questions that you might see. Uh, number five, why does this professor say this? So here you have to click on this, right? A pesar que ya escucharon todo el, toda la conversación, todo el lecture, um, tienen que aquí, eso es bueno, ¿verdad? Porque pueden escuchar de nuevo. Okay. According to the lecture, what evidence did Wengler find to support his theory of Pangea? select two options. So, algunas preguntas son, tienen más de una respuesta. Tienen que seleccionar dos o tres, depende. Okay, so you have to select two, 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 two answers. Okay. okay, let me see. All right, another type of question that you're going to see is like this, okay? Um, no, perdón, this, this is not a question question, eh, pero es como un espacio para to tomar nota. Okay. Now, no sé si esto te lo dan en papel o no. Right. But basically, aquí le das play, right? This is play. But basically, what you can do here is take notes based on the, on the, on the sections. So this lecture, it has two sections, right? Section one and section two, okay? And then they're going to talk about each one of this, okay? So, esto es como una guía de, para que ustedes puedan tomar nota, okay? Uh, so, what you can do is copy this or, you know, antes de darle play al audio, tener esto ya en tus notas so that you can listen and you can go, okay? So this is good. This is gonna help you for taking notes. Okay? Very important to, to have the, 
the notes. Okay. So taking notes es parte de lo que vamos a aprender un poquito que se llama active listening, que durante el pasaje tienes que estar haciendo algo. You have to do something. Writing, taking notes, um, something, right? Si estás solamente pasivo, escuchando, no vas a captar toda la información, right? Okay. Very good. So I want to just go over some things here uh, with you. Uh, this is another, uh, when you're taking notes, that's going to be very important. Um, y ya vamos a hacer unos ejercicios. Ahora vamos a hacer parte del examen verdadero. Um, you can do some of this. Record, reduce, recite, reflect, or review. Okay. It's something that you can do. Right. Um, another another way that you can take notes uh, here. Eh, creo que lo puse acá. Eh, you can do lead. Lead quiere decir like at the beginning. What are they talking about? What is the ideas? You can summarize. What is the talk about? And what is the ending of the of the passage? And what notes can you take? So we're going to practice this, right? Um, this is one way that I would do. Este es otro sistema de tomar notas. What you can do is you can do a circle like this, right? And inside the circle, you can put the main idea inside the circle, right? And then you can use la chibolita. Right? It's el sistema de notas de chibolitas. Basically, what you can do here is do something like this, right? The main idea, as soon as you hear the main idea in the conversation, right? For example, um, I don't know, they're talking about uh, solar space, okay? Let's say, for example, they're talking about solar space. Uh, that's going to be my main idea. And then I'm going to maybe write some notes here, right? Take some notes here. Okay. And then for each of the points that they're talking about, I can do something like this, right? Aquí va a estar otro, otro punto, otro punto, otro punto, right? You can also do this, sistema de notas like this. Of course, you can also do this, right? Okay, very good. So let's go and let's take a look at, uh, in YouTube, we're gonna do a practice test, okay? Uh, for the test, we have 30 minutes to complete the test, like 30, 35 minutes, but I, to complete the test, okay? But we can do it slow. Right, we don't have to finish it in 30 minutes. We can, we can take longer because I want you to become familiar with the test right now. So let me stop sharing here. Let me go to YouTube. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and read. Uh, let's listen to this person here speak. He's going to introduce the test. Um, Finally, here it is, an updated version of the TOEFL test, and in this case, the TOEFL listening test. So for those of you who don't know, as of August 1st, 2019, the TOEFL test has changed. Just a little bit, but it's changed. And it's hard to find a copy of this new test, but here it is, an updated version of the test. Now, let me just go over the changes really quickly. I know you want to start practicing, but just uh, take 30 seconds. Uh, here are the changes. So in the listening section of the test, pretty much everything has remained the same, except they took one academic passage away. So before, there were two parts, and there were four lectures and two conversations. Now there are 
two conversations and three lectures. The first part will have one conversation and two lectures. The second part will have one conversation and one lecture. The okay. first part. Okay, let me just say, if you see, there's two different versions, right? Of the test. And no sé cuál le tocaría, right, a uh, ustedes? But just for you to know, okay? The, I think what they did was they made it shorter, right? Porque este es más corto, the, the second one, okay? So lo han reducido un poco el examen. Part will have one conversation and two lectures. The second part will have one conversation and one lecture. That's it. Uh, before you had 10 minutes to complete each part. Now you have 10 minutes to complete the first part, as usual. But the shorter part, you have six and a half minutes. Now, that sounds like a, not a lot of time, but don't worry. The clock only starts after the audio passages, so don't worry about that. So, and... Okay, ¿escucharon eso? About, uh, uh, about the time. The time he said that you have 10 minutes to answer the, the, the lectures, and you have six minutes to answer the, the, the shorter passages. But the time starts ticking once you play the audio, okay? Hasta cuando tú le das play, tú le das play al audio, ahí empieza el reloj, okay? Anyway, here is the TOEFL listening test for 2019, the new version of the test. You can download the PDF version in the description below. It has an answer key with explanations and a grading rubric, so definitely make sure that you do that. And just really quickly, my name is Josh McPherson. I am the head instructor of TST Prep, an online TOEFL school, and our mission is simple, to help you get the TOEFL score you need as quickly and easily as possible. Okay, very good. Let's skip that. This is the directions, um, the same directions that I read to you. Yeah, I'll listen. Okay, so you guys are ready? Espero que puedan escuchar, ¿verdad? Díganme si... Si hay problemas con el audio o algo así. Um, so, uh, you're going to go ahead and listen. Listen to the conversation. Now, ¿qué deberían estar haciendo? Taking notes. Okay? So, you can do a little note system. Okay? Ya vamos a aprender diferentes estrategias para notas mañana. But you can do something like that. You know, you can do the little circle. What's some of the ideas there? Okay? This is a conversation, right? So you're gonna have two people, two people. Um, uh, another way that you can do it, right? Otro, otro sistema de notas, uh, quickly. Since you have two people here, maybe you can do something like this, right? And divide your, your, your notes, right? This is the first person and this is person number two. Okay. Well, de hecho, ya no dicen quién son. Student and the professor. So we can put a uh, student here. And this one will be the professor. All right. This is a, another way that you can take notes. Right. Very good. Remember also to capture the main idea at the beginning. Okay, I'm going to play the audio now. To a conversation between a student and a... Sorry. I want you to hear the instructions. Now listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, professor. You got a minute? Sure, Christy. Uh, did you pick up your paper yet? I just finished grading them and I was really impressed with yours. Really? Well, of course, I loved your arguments. And what you wrote about farming for less than $10 a day, it really has incredible real-world applications. I can tell you put a lot of thought into this paper. Speaking of real-world applications, that's sort of what I wanted to talk to you about, the student exchange program. Oh, sure, absolutely. Are you thinking of going somewhere? That's a great program. Well, I have a couple of places in mind, but I really have my heart set on Guatemala. 
What draws you to Guatemala? I think Guatemala would be the most relevant place for me. It would be perfect to go there so I can do some research about my ideas. I can see where you're coming from, Christy. I think you have some good reasons. I hate to tell you this, but the exchange program in Guatemala is only for Spanish majors, and the Spanish department is usually pretty strict about that. No. There has to be some way I can go. I've already done so much research about it. Guatemala is perfect for my research. It has the exact type of agricultural practices, economy, and environmental conditions I want to study and explore. You make a fair argument, but have you thought of other places? I really wouldn't want you to get your hopes up since it's a program run by the Spanish department, and I can't remember the last time a student was able to go who wasn't a Spanish major. That doesn't seem fair. Is there nothing I can do? They must have let someone go before who isn't a Spanish major, right? I mean, I know some Spanish, if that's any consolation. Look, I want you to have the opportunity to go, and I agree that it could be an ideal place for your research. Since you are very passionate about going, I'll talk to the person in charge of the situation and see if they can find a way to accommodate you. Really, Professor? Thank you, thank you. That means so much to me. I think you should prepare a solid argument to present to the Spanish department just in case. Can you do that? Of course. Absolutely. I'll do anything. I'll be ready. Okay. Glad to hear it. Let me talk to the department and I will let you know if anything changes. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Professor. Okay. Now, very good. Answer the questions. One. Very good. But antes de eso, eh, no sé si captaron alguna información. Okay. Eh, what was the professor doing? They were, he was grading papers. Uh, the student, she wants to go to the exchange program, wants to go to Guatemala. The professor told her that it's only for Spanish majors, but that he would talk to the person in charge. And the, the professor told her to prepare an argument. Okay? So, obviamente, tal vez ustedes captaron otra información. Está bien, right? Did, did you guys take, uh, did, did you take notes? Were you taking notes? See, ¿Sí? tomaron notas? The listening? Yeah, so it's very important that, that you take notes, okay? Tienen que estar haciendo algo, because si, si solamente están escuchando, están passive listening. You have to be active listening, okay? Ya vamos a, a, a ver eso un poquito más. ¿Qué es active listening? All right, so take notes. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the questions, right? Um, voy a dejar todas esas notas ahí, solo tal vez me ayudan a contestar. Ready. Okay, glad to hear it. Let me talk to the... Okay. Question number one, they say, why does the student, uh, why does the student go to see the professor? A to talk about her papers on farming practices. Mm, sí, de hecho, sí, el papel era, estaba calificando, right? He was grading, the professor was grading. Uh, B, to ask if she can study abroad in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C, to discuss her research on agricultural practices and environmental uh, conditions. No. To see if she can become a Spanish major. No. So it's going to be between A and B. What do you think? Letter B. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be B, right? Because most of the conversation was focused on the exchange program. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Very good. So most of the conversation was focused on that, right? That's really what she was excited about, talking to the professor. Okay. Okay, very good. Number two, why does Christy want to go to Guatemala? Select two answers. A, to continue her research on cost-effective farming. Maybe. Yes. Maybe, okay. B, because she has already studied about it and wants to learn more in person. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Sure. The agriculture and economic landscape closely matches what she wants to research. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that can be, that can be, right? Yeah, so definitely, one. she wants to learn more Spanish. So no, definitely oh. not, right? No, no. no. 
uh, between A and B, what do you think? A and B, A and C. A and C, to continue her research on cost-effective farming. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, excellent. Very good, very good. All right, let's go to the next section. I think we have, I think six questions, uh, let me see. Okay, next questions. Number three, why might Christy not be able to go to the, go on the trip to Guatemala? Uh, a, she, she is not a linguistic major, okay? That can be the reason, maybe. B, yes. the, Spanish, the Spanish department is in charge of this program. She's in charge of this program, that mm -hmm. can be one. Mm -hmm. C, she does not speak enough Spanish. D, mm -hmm. there are no more spots left on the program. No. I think it's between A and B. A and B. What do you guys think? It's going to be between A and B. I think it's... Uh, now, this is the thing. B, the Spanish department is in charge of this program. Um, yes, but that's not the reason, right? The reason is the professor told her it's only for Spanish majors. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that's why it's important, right? To take notes. That's, that's, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. that's, it, my, that's my issue with, uh, with A. Mm -hmm. Because it's a linguistics measure. It doesn't specify. Ah, ah. Oh, yes, yes. Major. Spanish. Yes. Okay, good, good point. Good point. Maybe, maybe it doesn't go with this. B, the Spanish department is in charge of this program. Mm, yeah, puede ser, maybe. Okay. She does not speak enough Spanish. Yeah, I think you're right. No, no me fijé, me fui por eso, I can see a Spanish. <laughs> so yeah, I think you're right. I think that the correct answer is going to be B, I think, right? Okay, so I, I will lose, I will, I will go for, for D. Now, notice that esto no estaba como específicamente así, ¿verdad? Eh, no, el profesor no dijo esto, right? He didn't say this. Pero es algo que podemos inf infer. All right, very good. Why? Why does the professor decide to help Christy select two answers? A, Christy is one of the most intelligent students in, in class. B, it the could be. could be, maybe. The professor agrees that Guatemala is a good place to do more research. Good, maybe. Christy is extremely motivated to study abroad in Guatemala. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christy knows some Spanish, so it will be easy to convince the Spanish department. No, right? Didn't didn't specifically say that. No, she mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I she think she mentioned it, but it doesn't mean that. And see. So definitely C, right? So what, what do you think? I think maybe A. This is extremely yeah. motivated. Maybe A. This is one of the most interesting. Because at the beginning, remember the professor just said, that, uh, your paper is one of the best that I've ever read. Something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. So... Be careful with that, right? Eliminen la que definitivamente nada, right? So eliminate that one. You know C, so then you just have a choice between A and B. All right, very good. Let's go to the next questions, the same passage. Let me see. Aquí está, number five. Why does the professor Ask Christy if she has thought, I can't read it. 
Why does the professor ask Christy if she has thought of other places to go? So remember the professor was like uh, telling her, um, maybe you should go to another place. You know, I don't want you to get your hopes up. Why does the professor ask Christy if she has thought of other places to go? A, he wants to know if there are any other, other countries Christy wants to travel to. B, he does not think Christy will be allowed to go to Guatemala. Yeah. Could be. C, he's leading up to suggesting a better place for her to study abroad. Um, D, he is curious if Christy can do her research in another country. So, the professor was not very convinced, right? He was like, mm, this, por qué? why? Why was he not so excited? Because, uh, in the Spanish department is not mm -hmm. going to allow to They're travel very to this area. Correct. She, she doesn't have the requirements, right? Mm -hmm. That the Spanish department is looking for. Uh, so, maybe it will be B. What do you think? I also think it's, it will be B. Okay. All right. Very good. So it's not too difficult, right? Uh, take notes. Um, you know, that's going to help you. Um, there is some information. For example, yo hice tres categorías, right? Hice student information, professor information, y después hice aquí lo que encaje en el medio, right? Whatever. The main idea or any other information that uh, so this is another system that you can use pueden usar un sistema así all right the the important thing is that you learn how to take some notes right no todo la conversación la van a escribir right no it's just short short uh deep short information all right uh, i think we have one more question for this section uh, no hasta ahí five questions all right, very good. For passage number two, I want you to uh, copy this, copy this little square here, que les pueda ayudar para las notes. Uh, I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, so what type of class is this? What subject? It's gonna be about astronomy, astronomy, right? Yo no sé nada de astronomy, right? But I'm going to look at the information that they give me here, right? So I have theory, theory, theory. So I have three theories, okay? And then I have a hypothesis, hypothesis, okay? Definition, a hypothesis and the theory, what can be, what is the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? Theory is basically just uh, an explanation, right? But a hypothesis is something ya, ya que tiene un poco de, de ciencia. Right? It's the other way. Oh, the other way? <laughs> so theory theory is going to be science. Theory it's has... Something, it's something that is already proved. There's, uh, ah, okay. there's some evidence. About ah, yes. That. Okay, very good, very good. So a hypothesis is more of an opinion, right? It's just an idea, an idea. Okay. All right, good. Okay, ya lo copiaron, listo? All right, let's go ahead and listen to the audio one more time. So 
Uh, what is this? A, a conversation between two people or a class talk? This is a class talk, right? It's what they call a lecture in English, right? I do remember the capture <laughs> theory, which... Hey, bien. Now I'll listen to part of a talk in an astronomy class. So, I would like to continue our discussion about the moon, more particularly about the origins of the moon and how it was actually created. We talked about three possible solutions, uh, more like theories, about how the moon was created. Can anyone tell me the name of one of these theories? Sarah. Well, I do remember the capture theory, which proposes that the moon was located somewhere else in the galaxy until eventually it was kind of like, captured? by the Earth's gravitational pull. Yes, and I'm glad you started with the capture theory because it's the easiest one to reject. Its primary drawback is that no one knows of any way that Earth could have captured such a large moon from elsewhere. One body approaching another cannot go into orbit around it without a serious loss of energy. Furthermore, if such a capture did take place, the captured object would go into a very strange orbit rather than the nearly circular orbit our moon goes through today. Finally, there are too many similarities in composition between Earth and the moon. It's much more likely that the Earth and the moon were somehow connected at one point in the past. What was another theory discussed? James? The fission theory. Like you said, the moon was once a part of the Earth, but somehow separated from it early in their history. But I remember you mentioned some problems with this theory too. Yes, the fission theory suggests that the moon separated from the Earth, but modern calculations have shown that this type of splitting is nearly impossible. Furthermore, it is difficult to understand how a moon made out of materials from the Earth could have developed so many chemical differences from our own. And the third? James again? Yeah, the last one is the sister theory. It claims that the moon formed together with the Earth, but also remained independent from it. This is why many astronomers once believed of other moons in the solar system, too. Yes, the sister theory was the dominant idea accepted by most astronomers in the past. But like the capture and fission theory, it had some problems, particularly when trying to explain how it could have such a lower density when compared to the Earth. Now, in an effort to resolve these apparent contradictions, scientists developed a fourth hypothesis for the origin of the moon, one that involves a giant impact early in Earth's history. This idea, known as the giant impact hypothesis, proposes that Earth was struck by an object approximately one-tenth Earth's mass, which is about the size of Mars. This is very nearly the largest impact Earth could experience without being shattered. Now, such an impact would disrupt much of Earth and eject a vast amount of material into space, releasing almost enough energy to break the planet apart. Computer simulations indicate that material totaling several percent of Earth's mass could be ejected in such an impact. Most of this material would be from the stony mantles of Earth and the impacting body, not from their metal cores. This ejected rock would then cool and form a ring of material orbiting Earth. It was this ring that ultimately came together and formed the Moon. While we do not have any current way of showing that the giant impact hypothesis is the correct model of the Moon's origin, it does offer potential solutions to most of the major problems raised by the chemistry of the Moon. Most importantly, since the Moon's raw material is from the deep rocks of Earth and the asteroid that hit it, the composition and chemistry of the Moon is better understood and explained. Now, answer the questions. 1. What is the professor? mainly discussing okay very good so bastante larga, right? <laughs> yeah so going back this is what i got this is some of the information that i was able to capture right so not that pueden ser diferentes it, it doesn't matter you know but basically i got some information right por lo menos no estaba con los brazos cruzados just listening you know at least i have some 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 information all right so uh, let me see. Let me take a, a picture. Now, ustedes van a tener un papel, ¿verdad? Papel y lápiz para poder, eh, para poder eh, tomar notas. Right? So, como eh, tengo que pasar a la otra imagen, lo que voy a hacer es tomarle una foto. 
All right, very good. Let's, let me erase this now. And let's go to the questions. Of the moon. Most important. Okay, question number one. What is the professor mainly discussing? Eh, y la profesor es una mujer, ¿verdad? So, ese es un término neutral. Uh, how the moon formed after a giant object impacted the earth. B, the composition of the moon in comparison to the earth. C, problems with theories about the origin of the moon. Maybe. Whether or not the moon was connected to the earth at one point. What do you think? Maybe C. I think C too. C. Mm -hmm. This can be more of the main idea, right? Yes. So this is saying mainly. Mainly. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So this is main idea, right? Basically. Number mm -hmm. two, how is the lecture organized? A, the professor discusses this information previously learned before introducing a new, okay, a new idea. Idea. B, no. the professor introduces an experiment and some possible problems with it. Mm, no. C, the, no. professor, the professor compares theories about the moon with other objects in space. Yes, Maybe. I... D, Maybe. the professor gives a historical account of theories on the origin of the moon. What do you think? Think maybe maybe C or D? What do you guys think? Between both of them, I think D is the most acceptable. Okay. Yeah, D. Why do you think D, Melody? Because she she explains how how the the different theories mm, have become mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, in fact, the students had mm -hmm. to explain that, but uh, mm -hmm. it sounds yeah. like it has yeah. been able. Good, good. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, even though she's not explaining year by year, right? But she is explaining uh, the development of the theories. Okay. So I think it's going to be D. I think so. All right. Very good. Questions? Okay. Let's go to the next questions. Number three and four. What are some problems with the capture theory? Select two answers, right? Bueno, aquí donde tengo que ir a mi nota. <laughs> Let's see. I have to go to my notes. All right, a uh, capture theory, all right. Okay, so para recordarle, the capture theory says that the moon was located somewhere else in the galaxy. Okay. A, there are too many chemical differences between the Earth and the Moon. No, it is more possible that the Earth and Moon were never connected. Okay, so we're discussing problem. Problem. C, during entry into the solar system, the Moon would have had too much energy to be captured. Okay, maybe. All right, maybe. I'm going to put a question mark. D, the moon would have a strange orbital path if it were captured by the Earth. What do you guys think? Definitely yeah. D. C, C, yes, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what else? You think D? Yeah. You think D? Okay. The, now, the it, two are, are not problems with the capture theory to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
they are actually in favor of. Mm, okay, very good, very good. So if you read carefully, it's in favor of, right? It's not uh, posing a problem. Okay, very good. So, esta es como una, ajá, como tú dices, ¿verdad? A favor de. It's more plausible. Plausible es como más creíble que esto pasó. So, so this is a problem. C and D is a problem. Okay, very good. Excellent. Four, which theory about the moon is most likely true? Uh, at the end of the lecture, the one that said that had less problems, the fission, the fission, fission, I think that's how you pronounce it. The fission theory, the giant impact hypothesis, the sister theory, or the capture theory. Al final, ella dijo que había una que contestaba lo, crea, eh, daba una solución a los otros problemas, which is the last one, right? The giant impact, correct. Que era la que estaba sola, verdad, al final. Right? Very good. So it was actually, uh, hold on. When you go back, right? Era esta, verdad? La que ella más contestó. Okay. All right. Very good. Excellent. Uh, let's go to, wait, one more question. Uh, okay. Number five. What does the professor imply about the sister theory? Oh, I forgot. I have to go to my notes. Okay. A, modern astronomers do not believe this theory is correct. B, it explains why the moon is made out of the same materials as the earth. Mm, maybe. Uh, but be careful because this is implied. Es decir, cuál fue la actitud de la profesora acerca de esta teoría. So be careful. C, the destiny of the moon compared to earth proves it is true. Mm, creo que no, no dijo eso eh? It was less popular than the capture and fission theory. Hmm. No. Yo escribí algo en mi nota que decía que era la teoría dominante. It was the dominant theory in the past. So definitivamente, D cannot be. Okay. Um, A, modern astronomers do not believe this theory is correct. Mm, maybe. Uh, B, it explains why the moon is made out of the same materials as the earth. I think this is correct. The destiny of the moon compared to the earth proves it is true. Okay. All right. So what do you think? I'm going to go for B. <laughs> Yo no capté los problemas. Yeah, I didn't capture the problems with that. What do you think, Miguel? I will go for B too. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else has a different opinion? Okay, and let's do the last question. Why is the giant impact hypothesis also problematic? What do you think? A, the impact, the impact likely would have caused Earth to break it apart into many pieces. Uh, B, the moon is too small for such an impact. C, there is more proof that the sister theory is correct. D, there is no way to prove it is correct. So there's a problem. I'd go with B. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd go I... with B because it's a hypothesis. Okay. All right. So maybe it could be between A and B. All right. All right, very good. Now, nah, I lo dejo, right? Yo no, no he visto la, al final del video se le da la respuesta por si quieren revisar ustedes, okay? All right, very good. Okay. I just wanted to give you an introduction. 
so that you guys can uh, become a little more familiar with the test, all right? Para que le quiten, se quiten el miedo, right? Que es lo que le va a ayudar mucho las notes, taking good notes. All right, very good, guys. So I'll see you tomorrow, all right? You can go into the platform, watch the videos, and uh, do some of the practices that are on the platform. No se olviden de terminar la plataforma también. Okay, oh, guys. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good night.